Uh, today, I would like to introduce you to one of our artists, James D. Langley. He's from South Africa, and he is currently doing his exhibition in the gallery. Hi, James. How are you doing? Hey, you're fine. Uh, tell us something about your art. I'm, well, I'm showing work from my series of lithographs, and they use trees as the references. I'm from Africa. The trees I know are African trees. I'm particularly connected to baobab trees, they for me have always um, made me feel like I'm touching something ancient. Um, so I've got a baobab tree behind me on the left and on the right here, I've got an acacia tree. Acacia trees are the famous kind of quintessential African form of myself. And I discovered a few years ago photographs that my grandfather took in the 1930s. And I've used those photographs as a reference for this tree here and for some of the other ones. Baobab trees are sometimes two or three thousand years old and the technique I've used here is drawn from Chinese and Japanese calligraphy which dates back four or five thousand years. So it's kind of connecting together two very ancient things. Well these are lithographs from a series that I did about two years ago. Um, each is, a, is edition 20 which are numbered and signed. And I've used as reference for these trees from Africa, which is where I'm from. And what we've got here is an acacia tree and a baobab tree. Um, an acacia tree is, is kind of the quintessential African tree. It's a thorn tree, the umbrella thorn. Um, you know, you see photographs of giraffes eating the top of it. Um, what I've tried to do here is to connect together a sense of the, of the ancient landscape in Africa. So if you look through here, you get a sense of the plains, there are trees in the distance. Um, and the style that I've used for the drawing is, it draws on ancient Chinese and Japanese calligraphy, which goes back a few thousand years. And that also connects across to the ancientness of the baobab tree. So if you follow across over here, um, the baobab tree most people probably haven't seen them. Um, they, they live to two or three thousand years old. And to be in front of one of these, they have, they have a diameter of 150 feet or so. They're, they're gigantic trees. And to stand in front of one is like being in the presence of an ancient spirit, an ancient being. Um, they aren't used by people. The wood is never used by people, so they survive for thousands of years. And in certain parts of Africa, you get you get them. Now, if you again have a look at the line over here, you can see the way that I've, I've applied the paint with a brush by making it heavier and lighter, so the line actually pulsates, and that gives the the painting a a liveliness, a sense of vibrancy, and. I've pulled in here the sun, I've, I've used the, the twilight in, in, in being out in, in Africa is a magical time. And this is part of a series of six lithographs and the others show different times of the day and different settings of these baobab trees. I, I became aware of it because one of my best friends in South Africa is Korean and she introduced me to elements of Korean art and from, from there I started researching it more and more and I've researched Chinese art and Japanese art and, and taken a particular interest in calligraphy. Um, I was at an exhibition recently at uh, the Met of New York looking at, at how the artists apply the paint um, and I, I love the ancientness of that and what I was trying to convey here in the sense of the ancient of the landscape and the ancient of the tree with the ancient of the sense of, of the calligraphy. And tying together the continents is also a, a pretty interesting thing because they seem so different and to pull them together and sort of juxtapose them um, makes, for, makes for an interesting dynamic. Well picked up. Um, but it's actually carved from Jade and it says my first name phonetically. Um, but why I liked it again is a reference back to Asian art. Um, the connection of, of African composition and African reference and, and Asian technique. Um, you mentioned something about you have a series of six. Uh, where can we see this series? Um, well, they're on the eModern website. 
um, the six are there. Um, and there will be more coming out as well. So it's, it's an ongoing series. Um, and they're all the same dimensions and they all make reference to, to trees in this landscape. So it's interesting to, to watch the, the progression. Uh, can you tell us some of your future uh, project that you're going to work with some of the uh, designer in New York City? I'm working with a fashion designer there um, using my paintings because I don't only do lithography, I also do paintings. Most of my work is in, in a world on canvas. And he's taking some of those paintings and printing them onto silk and other fabrics and turning them into portraiture garments. I, I don't know much about fashion, but for me, what's interesting is seeing the art applied onto a different medium. And, and seeing it come to life in a different situation. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're once-off pieces, so they're not going to be sort of seen everywhere. Um, but it enables people to engage with, with my work in a different way. It also takes it much more abstract, um, which for me is exciting, because you can't, on a garment, see the entire piece, you see elements of it. Um, and that makes for an interesting dynamic. Thank you very much. I hope you will come back here more often and you know that in 2014 you're going to have a solo show here at the gallery. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, cool. Bye bye.